Constructing your life is about much more than just building a bank account. Each week, join real estate entrepreneur and mindset coach Austin Linney as he interviews guests who are constructing their dream lives and impacting the world around them on a daily basis. If you're an entrepreneur or wanting to start a business or you just want to hear motivating stories of how others have overcome the odds, you are in the right place. And now for your host, Austin Linney. So here's the deal, guys. Austin Lenny, yeah, you know my name. Who cares? I don't even want to do this podcast because I want to steal this man's attention for myself. But I guess we'll do it. We'll provide some value to the community. It's fine. But Mr. Travis Ricky in the house. We, by the way, guys, the killer. We're, that's what we're just calling him now, the silent killer, because we didn't even know how much he was doing. How you doing, my man? I'm fantastic, brother. I love it. So we covered a lot of stuff before we even got started but i you know what i like to do with my guests is kind of let them um share their story and kind of wherever you want to start man it's totally up to you Ooh, wide open playing field not, dangerous not, not like two years old though like catch me up a little bit yeah you know. it all started with a man and a woman <laughs> We have an opportunity as humans, right? To do something that would revolutionize the world. And it's very simple. Think for your mother fucking self. Yes. Okay, and, and, and I'm so serious about this that I'm talking about all the guys that you listen to their podcast, all the books that you read. You motherfucker inside of yourself are the greatness that you're seeking don't seek it from outside of you and that's the podcast guys we'll see everybody next week thanks for your time uh <laughs> feel fits uh austinlinney.com no <laughs> no you're right bro and i want to piggyback off of that because and, and and i'll dive right in so for the last 10 years all i've done is reduce recidivism in the united states of america what does that we mean are, i don't even know what that word means bro recidivism Recidivism is the percentage of individuals that get released from prison and go back to prison. Ooh. Right now in the United States of America, the US, the recidivism rate, which means the people that get out of prison and go back within the first 12 months is north of 80%. 80. Okay, hold on. This is, this is okay, officially, now we're in my favorite conversation, period. Okay, and the reason is, Okay, I want to ask before I answer, why? Why, why are we there? Why are we at that why, rate? Why do they go back? What's the, what's the, if you had boiled it down to one thing, why? One word, identity. Okay. You've been in my six coaching calls this morning already. So you're <laughs> in my brain. Identity. And exactly what you said. When, when all of these individuals go down, they go to jail, they go to prison, they become the wrong version of themselves. They're told, like the ignorant children, don't do this, don't do that, don't touch this, don't think for yourself. Why? Because this is what you are. I am a drug addict. I am an alcoholic. I am a bad father. I am a felon. And so you start to ingrain this in your mind. And what's interesting about your mind is it's the most powerful computer that any of us are going to use. And so as your mind goes, your energy flows. So each day as you're conditioned to think that you're something, well, why wouldn't I just go back to the environment that fostered me, which is jail or prison? And that's crazy to some people. Why would an individual want to go back? Why would they? Why would they? Because that's their identity. I think... I think I did it, the way that I describe it, and I subscribe to a client this morning, because I, you know, addiction, drug addict, homeless, the whole night. Yep. I can set a goal to not drink for 30 days. Mm -hmm. And I can hit it. That's easy. It's a goal. I can do it. Sure. But if my identity is I'm an alcoholic, yes. you're going you're gonna to trip up. All day, bro. And I will tell you this. I'll tell you this. We'll go even a step further. The individuals, most of my friends that are behind the walls, most of my friends that are incarcerated, live a more meaningful and purposeful life than many of my friends out here in society. Right. 
And so when you start to really understand the obligation that we have to live up to our identity, that's when you become great. I have a friend. She's a friend. She's a wife of a, of a friend, a former client. Okay. She's 38. They told her that she would die at three. Wow. She has a, she has a rare disease, right? Whoa. And we did this podcast episode. And she's walking me through as a kid when she was eight and 13, how when she was nine years old and she was in the hospital like 300 days out of the year, Holy that she cow. that she that she stopped making friends with people because they would die. That makes sense. And then she said, "You know what? I'm not going to do that because that's not a way to live a life." Mm -hmm. And then I said something during that podcast. I said, "You and those people that you made friends with when you were nine and thirteen, and y'all were all dying, had a more honest relationship than anybody else out there." Whoa. That's good, man. That's we good. We are spending our entire fucking life living through context, and I'll and I'll, and I'll use I'll use the simplest example ever. Your goals are meaningless. You want to know why they're meaningless? Because they're only a representation of your past self. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, then how the fuck do I operate? Yes. How? How do I begin? Where do I begin? What do I do? I get that question every day, as do you. Mm -hmm. How do they? I'll let you go. Um, my word, my word is courage. Okay. Because it takes courage to be successful. And it doesn't take courage to be mediocre. Mediocre well, fits into society. Mediocre easy. looks the same, walks the same, acts the same, eats the same, but courage. That looks a little bit differently. And it's uncomfortable to be courageous. Have you, have you ever read, uh, have you ever read Dan Sullivan? You ever heard of him? Dan Sullivan. Not, Not how, uh, it doesn't matter. Okay, this guy's coach for 45 years, top level entrepreneurs. When COVID happened, He's like, wrote a book. He's like, I'm going to write a hundred books. And so he's writing about all the stuff he learned, like quick books, easy to read dollar on Kindle, like the best information you ever heard. Okay. And he said the number one issue to entrepreneurs and people in general to getting started on a new thing is they've got it all wrong. It's the mm -hmm. four C it's the four C's. Oh, what are they? Here's the problem. I'm me and I'm going to do something new. I'm going to start a podcast. I'm going to be a real estate investor. I'm going to do all that shit. Right. Uh -huh. I'm waiting around for the confidence to come <laughs> to make the move. Wait for it. That's the, that's the game, right? The perfect here's time. How, here's how he breaks it down. Okay. You need the commitment mm -hmm. to the thing. Then you get the courage. Yes. Then the courage gives you the capacity to do it. And after you've done all that, then you get the confidence. I like that. And it's, it systematically changes the way that you view stuff. I love that. And you're right. And you're absolutely right. But what you talked about there was how you view stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So I always, I always question that. Like when you're talking about how we view things, when you're talking about perspective, most of the time, if not all of the time, like you said, people are looking for greatness in, in like pockets. Maybe if I listen to this podcast, it'll get me fired up and that'll change my life. Or maybe if I just rub shoulders with the right person, that'll, that'll change my trajectory. And while I agree that living a life that's unexamined is dull and boring, I would submit to exactly what you just said, that the greatness that you're looking for resides in your being. But the difference of understanding your greatness and, and realizing it comes from that commitment. You have to be convicted. You can't be one foot in and one foot out to obtain any change in life, mental, physical, spiritual, okay. financial. So another, another uh, workshop I do with my clients, this is my favorite one I ever do because it fucks them up. 
<laughs> I said, I said, I said, you think that you're all in, you're not all in. And, mm. I'll, and I'll show you how. I'll show you how. That hurts. That hurts. Wait for it. Wait for it. If you, I'll just use you as an example. If you, these are, these are your goals, right? Okay. If you were to go all in for the next 60 days, these are the, how would you feel? Well, I'd feel this way. I'd feel this way. I'd feel this way. This would happen. This would happen. This would happen. Okay. 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 Yep. Now, if you went all in, what's the negative? Oh, I'll wait. Failure. Failure. No, 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 no. I'll wait. There isn't one. Oh, so there, so, is, there so, is no negative on going all in. Exactly. Okay. But yet, but yet we walk around saying we're all in. Um, and it's a simple question. Does your audio match your video? Mm. Why is it so difficult for us to have the audio that we play in our head to match? Because we think our words matter. Mm. And you the words what? of other my, people? Yeah, my whole 20s. Dude, okay. I was walking around. I don't understand. You're not going to invest in me? I got the mind. I got the shit. No, bro, you're 80 pounds overweight. You drink every yes. day. You're fucking lying to yourself. But yep. guess what? The moment I got my mind right, the moment I got my language right, the moment I got my feet right. Yeah. Because let me tell you something. You know what happened to me? True story. Got sober. I was doing all right. Lost 30 cram from a business. Fucking, I mean, I was just like at my shit. And it was like October. And I was like, dude, I, I always like to do something at the end of the year, like fucking like head in the new year, like good. So I made a promise to myself when I got sober, because I was the stop, you know, one of the greatest things I ever heard in my life is that you're a deadbeat dad. And I'm like, mm. and he's like, yeah, you got half pregnant ideas all over town. <laughs> and so I made a promise to myself that regardless of whatever happened, if I started something, I would finish it and I would be aggressive about it, like okay. to myself, like, because that's the confidence I needed. Okay. So when I started 75 hard, I went 150 days straight. Nice. Not for anybody else, but no. I raised what standard was to me by 30 feet and it's changed my entire life. But here's the rub. Everybody that comes to me, they're asking for one thing. It's very simple. Mm. I want consistency. Yes. Okay. Consistency is like a buzz stalls through life that will fuck anything up. Yes. It does not exist. It does not wield to outsource stuff. But here's the problem. The reason you don't have consistency is because you're not consistent with who the fuck you are. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And the narrative that you're telling yourself every day while you're brushing your teeth doesn't match the story that you're living from your nine to five. And it isn't giving you the authentic conversations to have around the dinner tables of America to change the trajectory dude, of their life. Dude, true story. I'm in, I'm in Cincinnati yesterday or two days ago. I'm at my buddy's house. He's one of my old clients who switched his, le left his career, started a new business. They're fucking killing it. He's got three kids and we're sitting in his house his daughter's like six, I think, or something like they're so smart. They're critical thinking. And he says, Evie, remember when daddy was working all the time and he wasn't home? And he's like, you know how daddy's home all the time now and he works from home and he gets to spend time with you? Mm -hmm. He's like, that man over there is the reason. Mm. And he taught me how to think. Remember how, like, I asked you how to think? Like, he taught you how to, like, think smarter and, and think and, and be happy. And I'm, I'm yeah. reliving this moment right now because I didn't, it didn't register in, in that exact moment. And I'm, I'm filled with gratitude. And I'm thinking to myself, huh. like, holy fuck. Yeah. There's, there's, like, three kids, another kid on the way. There's nine employees they have now that are all... Yeah from the conversations that him and I had. Life-changing, life-changing. Because what you gave to him was you gave him an identity, which allowed him to create a narrative. That narrative gave him that self-confidence. That self-confidence changed his life. That's what you gave to him. When, when 
so often we hear this like tigers can't change there and zebras can't change there and leopards will never not have spots like you start to hear all these buzzwords as we get older but the good news is you're not a damn jungle animal individuals like us we can change you can be better but i would submit to you this one thing and this is exactly where you gave your client you will never rise above the opinion that you formed of yourself yellow yeah so there's a book called what you say when you talk to yourself i must have bought 75 copies here's how many how many people are in your program right now currently that you i'm sure i'm sure it's a shitload right on our mindset pro yeah our, our coaching program we have about almost 300 okay yeah i can't afford that but here's the deal i, I want how about book, three okay this book needs to get in their hands i bought it for every client i've ever talked to okay and, okay. and, and basically it's how to reprogram the way that you talk to yourself what's I it called it, like it's called what you say when you talk to yourself i think the author i basically bought him a new house i think at this point right now but here's the rub you ready for it ready programming creates beliefs beliefs yes. create attitudes attitudes create feelings feelings determine actions actions create results money in the bank literally money in the bank i'll tell you this i it's so funny you say that i have this post-it note right here in my office yesterday i was at the gym yesterday morning and i said your thoughts control your feelings your feelings control your actions your actions determine your results Yes. I mean, that book, you know what my, my, one of my first clients said to me, she goes, that book should be illegal. It's got such good information in it. <laughs> and you know what it is? It's 13 motherfucking dollars. Is it really? 13 okay. bucks, baby. To but change your fucking life. But that's not the rub. It, that's not the it. rub though. No. That's not the rub. Tell me. And, and the rub is that you don't think high enough of yourself to invest properly. Meaning not that I you won't buy the book. It's that you won't integrate it. Yes. You won't do it. You won't do it. When you start, and, I, and, and, and I'll go on a tiny tangent. I'll go on a little tangent here for everybody that wants to hit the, hit the mute button. But the question is this. If you understand that you are a 400 trillion to one miracle, you don't need the motivational quotes to get out of bed. You don't need the energy drinks and the coffee to get you going in the morning. You understand that if you start acting like it and you stop using the F word every day, and I'm going to tell you what the F word is. That word is fine. So many people ask, hey, how's life? How's work? How's the missus? How's the kids? And we all say fine. It needs to be the F word that's removed from your vocabulary because just like you dropped Austin, perspective becomes beliefs. And when you start to believe that you're fine, you start to act like you're fine and you walk like you're fine and you look like you're fine. But the reality is you're a miracle, 400 trillion to one. And so you should be great. You should not be fine. You're creating writing notes you're you're creating a space right mm. and i think where people get where people get tripped up is they see guys like you and i and they're like i know but i need to do this and i need to do that and it's like you don't need to do anything like here's the uh, you'll love this you'll love this so one of the things i, I get up early like yeah. I, have a, I have a lot going on like that, that would be an understatement, but I get up early. I just like it. Uh, and I must get like seven DMS a, a week. And they're like, and they always ask this question. It's the same fucking question from every fucking person. <clears throat> what time do you go to bed? Oh, I say, uh, wrong question. Wow. It's not even, you're not even in the right. You're not even in the right fucking zip code. No, the question that you should be asking is, what the fuck gets you up every yes. morning that you burn with the fire to fucking destroy the day? That's How the are you so fired up? Yes. Okay, because it's like asking the fisherman how the fish tastes instead of asking how he caught so many. <laughs> We're asking Bro. the wrong questions. Way wrong Ourself question. and everybody else. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's the generic. It's the generic. We're just going to go with the generic. 
Like, well, it is. And, and most of us, like you said, are just living. So look around, right? We're the most obese, medicated, in-debt society that ever was in America. And you can go on YouTube and Amazon. I'm sure there's hundreds of thousands of books on how to find your life, how to figure out your purpose, start with why, and all that other good stuff. And it's positive. Don't get me wrong. But... <laughs> But I, I, I can't. my coach, my coach does the greatest impression ever. And he says that now we bastardize uh, morning gratitudes. Oh. Well, well, I did my I said my I said, I'm going to be successful. I said, I'm going to be happy. Yeah. And he's like, but I did my list. But yeah, but you didn't embody it. motherfucker. You didn't. You didn't. You didn't. It. And, and you run around with buzzwords and mantras like this one. It all serves me. It all serves me. OK, <clears throat> what if your wife gets murdered? Does that serve you? No, only if you ask the right questions. So many of us are running around on autopilot. You get up in the middle of the night, you go take a leak and you don't stub your toe because your, your brain is conditioned. Don't touch that. Don't move here. Don't go there. Don't, 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 don't. And, and you've got this little thing in your brain called the RAS, the reticular activating system that tells you what not to do. And so the moment you want to step outside and you want to go, wait, I'm going to start this podcast. I'm going to start this business. I'm going to shoot my shot with this hot chick. Your, your brain goes, ah, I don't know. There's going to be a lot of pain involved. I don't know. Stop, stop, stop. Remember that one time you touched the stove? Remember that one time on the, on the corner of the bed with the pinky toe? That hurt. That hurt. This could hurt worse. And you settle and you go, you know what? This could hurt worse. This could, it, it could. So I'm just going to hang out. I'm just going to kick back. You're right. This could hurt worse. And besides, you know, as I'm brushing my teeth, you're right. I'm not perfect. No one's going to buy anything from me. I'm not really going to be an example. To, you're right. You know what? That's good. I'm going to go. I should be grateful for this nine to five that makes me want to slip my wrists and has caused me to be 80 pounds overweight and drink on Tuesdays in the fetal position under my desk. You're right. I should be grateful. I'm going to start. I'm going to start with gratitude. Where's that gratitude book? Someone give me a quote. <laughs> you, you ever you ever watch The Office? Yeah. <laughs> so one of my favorite little blurbs in that entire fucking series was Pam, who hates her fucking job. Yep. Says, yeah, you know, we get this many vacation days. And so I try to hang on to them as long as I, I can. She goes, I made it to January 3rd. <laughs> Look, guys, we're not asking you to run through a wall. We're not asking no. you to be us. We're not asking you to change the world. We're asking you to do one thing. Change your world. Yes. Change your motherfucking world. You want to know my dream, Travis? I'll tell you my fucking dream. Tell I'm going to walk you through my fucking dream. This is my North Star. This is my fucking why above everything else. Okay. I want to be 75 years old. Okay. I want to I want to leave in the morning for my villa in Tuscany okay. where I've cooked. Yes, you heard me. Cooked for my Airbnb guests that are living on my property out of my garden. Yes. And walking down the street to get my produce for the day. Mm. And I'm standing on the street with my fiance who's right here and somebody yells out across the street. That's motherfucking Austin Lee. Holy shit <laughs> and he runs up. Hold on. He runs up and I go, "Hey man, like, I appreciate it, but I don't know you. And he says, you don't know me, but you coach so-and-so, and he changed my life. Mm. Magic. Magic. I love the clarity that you have dis demonstrated there. So many people, when they always ask me, hey, where do I begin? Right. Where do I start? How do I begin? How do I make money? How do I invest? How do I, how do I, how do I, how do I, bro, you can't even make a decision on where you want to go for lunch. Do you really think as a steward, as a steward, as somebody who's going to be a, a family man and a mentor who God is going to give you abundance when you can't figure out if you want tacos or not, do you really think that you get to level up in life? No, the answer is no. And so you cannot, you just cannot. Look, 78, that's the number I want everybody to write down on the top left corner of their paper, on the top left corner of their desk, on that cute little calendar. If you're a CPA and you've got, oh, look, it's April and you're counting down the days of hatred until the next spring break or vacation. 78 birthdays is what most North American white males get. That's what we get in this go around, 78 birthdays. 
That's the average life expectancy. How many have you used up? That's the question to look at yourself in the mirror and to say, if I can't articulate my vision as clear as Austin just did, guys will come to me and they'll say, hey, I want to be a good dad. What does that look like? Is that 5 a.m. at the gym with your son? Is that 7 a.m. making pancakes with your daughter? Is that 4.30 picking them up from school? Is that 7.30 p.m. making sure that you're their tutor? What does it feel like? Don't tell me you want to be a good dad or you want to make more money because you can't even articulate it. Do you think that the universe or God or whatever is going to give it to you when you can't define it? The answer is no. And that's where we need to get out of as a society. Stop being a sheep. And stop being somebody who will walk down a path because somebody else has something that you want. You've got to figure out what your legacy is. You've got to chase your dreams, not the rabbits of the other people who are on that crazy track. Guys, who's ever listening to this shit, if you don't understand that this conversation right here is like one of the best ones I've ever been a part of, because we're not asking you to be anything that you don't already have inside of you. Yeah. And I mean that with full clarity. Because I remember two years ago, I thought it was outside of me. And, and here's what, you know what somebody said to me yesterday in my coaching group hmm. when I was sharing my wins? And it kind of, it's been sitting with me. It's been like really sitting me because that's, it's a grown up comment. Okay. One of the girls says, you kind of intimidate me. Oh. And she goes, and I, and she goes, but it's awesome. And I like I go, it. Yeah. I go, yeah, but how? And she goes, cause the scope of your growth is insane. Mm. What a compliment. What like, a compliment. The, as my fiance would tell you, who's super spiritual, she said, you had a dam of goodwill that for 37 years was just shoved in the corner. And there was a couple leaks from time to time. You made a little money. You, you were happy, like, but it wasn't really great. And the moment that you throw your own karmic cycle, Mm. And you owned who you were. Look at what's happened in the last seven months. It's beautiful. You find your tribe. That's what I've learned. You find Everybody, your like, I do. I don't even know who the fuck you are. Like, literally, I don't know who you are. It's probably Dennis. I know Dennis, rec you know, put us together. Right. Always Dennis. Always. But what, I'm saying, but what I'm saying is, but I allowed myself to show up for this. Now we met. Now we're going to be best friends. It's over. Yep. Um, we're going to do business together. But what I'm saying is like, she always says to me, like, every time we meet somebody, they're like the best humans ever. Mm -hmm. And she's like, you just know the best. And I'm like, no, because I, I know that I'm the best. Yes. So when I'm the best, then other people will show up accordingly. And what's happening in the coaching business is my time is getting more and more expensive. Yep. But I'm, I'm asking more out of myself, but I'm also asking more out of my clients if they want to, if they want to join me in leveling up. Right. But yeah. my, my other podcast host said the greatest thing I've ever heard. We, we literally, it was my coach, him and me on a call. And I almost fell out of my fucking chair because he's very, he, he's written like 15 books, super smart, very intellectual, doesn't, but it'll hit you with a hammer. Right. You know, like yeah. right when you don't expect it. So my, my coach is talking through the scenario. And he's like, you know what? Most of my clients are Jewish. So for like a two week stretch, they're having their holidays. And like, yep. I'm fucking like, he's an amazing coach, but he's like, I'm fucking with myself in my head. Like, oh my God, I'm not busy. What should I be doing this week? Even though he's still getting paid, but he doesn't have anybody to coach. Right. And he's like, so it was Wednesday morning. This went on for like 10 days. And he's like, finally, I'm like, you got to get out of your funk. He's like, you know, it'd be great if I took the opportunity to go for a walk with my wife take her to breakfast and like spend that time together that she's been asking for. Mm. He goes, it was really great to, to have that freedom to do that. Wow. And my podcast host says, or was that opportunity always available and you never took the opportunity. Ooh. Like a hot knife through butter. It's this word 
that it, I think is the is the linchpin to everything. Permission. Mm. <laughs> so true. Permission. Goodness gracious. And and you know when you start to man, that is just that is good stuff right there. That is so good. That is, I really like that. I really do. I'm gonna. It's I'm gonna this word. That. It's this word that I think hems us up on everything. And so what I'm letting my clients know, I'm the first one to jump through the, the door, baby. It's got fire on it. And I'm going to come back with a fire extinguisher and put some flames out and go, this is how you start a podcast. This is how you build a business. This is how you do this. And so when I realized that, all fear went out because it's very simple, super simple. When you realize it, guys, don't get all your panties in a lot with this bullshit. I'm using the word for, for effect. When you realize that you're the creator yeah. of everything that exists in your world, yeah. you're un-motherfucking-stoppable. Yeah. And something no, I, snapped I, in I me did. like seven months ago, and it was like, just go out and create. Find the best people, put them in the room together, lose the ego, yeah. care nothing about the money, wake up 15 years from now, and everything you want will be in front of you. Yes. Yes. 1000%. And when you, you know, it's interesting. And, and you started to tell your authentic story. You, 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 even though, like, like you said, your fiance told you, you had bits and, and, and moments and ideas and thoughts and, you know, stuff that you could probably point to along the way. But so many of us are living in a mind that doesn't suit our reality. And when that happens, we have, we, we have a tendency to get away from ourselves and we start to use buzzwords. We say, oh, we're depressed, we're sad, we're anxious. We start to use these buzzwords because the way that you thought your life was going to go and that picture that you had in your mind doesn't meet your reality. And so then you start to blame shift. Oh, it's because of this, it's because of a job, it's because of this, because, 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 because. But the reality is just like you said, it's the permission that you continue to ask for that doesn't allow the door of opportunity to be opened. So how do you open the door? In my personal opinion, in my personal, very tiny, very little, tiny opinion, the way that I believe you open the door is with a belief system. We've been told from a young age, you know, I grew up in a household that was just very tumultuous, a father who was a heroin addict, a notorious gang, organized crime gang member. And so you start to get told certain things in life. And most people, when you talk to most people, most people think that success is reserved for others. Success is for those special people. Uh, it, yeah, that's not going to work for me, but it'll work for someone else. Yeah, you know what's really interesting? Because you've been in the rooms and I've been in the rooms. And I coach a couple of them. Dude's got 30, 100 mil, a billion. Just yep. like you and me, baby. Bro, same pants, same pants, same feet, one leg at a same time, brother. Same insecurities. Yep. You have no idea what the fuck's going on. Nope. <laughs> no. And they think you've got it right. It's it's that it's that process of the pit. I talk about this a lot. All right. So so I talk about let's look at let's look at the pits of life, and you could look at biblical pits or scriptural pits or whatever you want to do, right? Or 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 down times or lulls or adversity, whatever we're gonna call it. But the pit of life is where the real process happens. And I think that so many of us have subscribed to this instant gratification. If it can't be obtained by my two thumbs, then it's going to take too long. The pit is the process. And guess what? In that motherfucking pit, there's divorce. Mm. There's... Uh, losing 30 grand in the business there's being 85 pounds overweight there's not knowing how you're going to pay the bill next week and then there's a decision yes action and then there's you know like here's the deal you know what i think is fucking awesome and i and i i prescribe everybody that knows me in this i love messy action action like yes. like awkward like awkward work like like fuck you shit like like no austin you're doing too much Say that to me one more motherfucking time. 
Yeah, and tell me what? again, please. I, I'm never going to talk to you again because okay. here's where you and I have a different. Don't tell me how to do my life. That's the number one thing. Support me, guide me. Don't tell me how to do my life. But here's the thing. You think that everything I'm doing needs to make money. That's where we have a difference. So true. Some of those things give me energy to go do the things that get make me money, motherfuckers. Yes. And you're inspired. You hear people say it all the time. I'm burnt out at work. You're not burnt out. You're not a candle. I had 15 Zoom calls yesterday, 15 today. I woke up at four this morning to work out. I'll go till seven o'clock tonight and I'll fucking run across that fucking water right there because there's nothing on my motherfucking schedule that's a that's not a fuck yes. Yes, 1,000%. But that's because you're committed. But, but, but also cultivated. It yeah. didn't happen overnight. This took two years. And then it's still a process of saying like, hey, I, I know you can do it, but should you? And oh. so what's happening, what's happening very quickly is the circle's getting super small. Yes. And we're only dealing with business with people that want to do business the right way with values and a smile and have fun and dance and do all that shit. Because here's the truth. And I'll be, and we're going to, we're going to tell this entire story. I, dude, when I tell you this idea, you're going to fucking lose your mind because we're going to document everything transparency. And I'm going to sell it as an NFT all the knowledge to build a business, an empire business. And then I'm going to give all the money away to educate kids. So yeah, that's just part of the thing. But we have an opportunity to create whatever it is we want when we decide that we're going to do it, but also understand that we have to start from a place of like saying, what can I do today? Like, what can I do today? Today, like right now. Right now. And, and, and then- uh, you, you said something earlier that I think is really interesting. And, and I deal with a lot of people that have addiction, like a lot. And, and maybe they don't say it at first and it comes out like a month in, but it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. But I had a client, one of my first ones who was former cocaine addict and former uh, whatever. And he used to wake up every morning angry, like angry. Like he would mm -hmm. wake up, he tried everything, running. Like he was angry, like he was fucking angry, Okay. Like, like it was really odd. We couldn't figure it out. And here's what I did. When he gets up in the morning, he looks at a certain place in his wall that had a picture. We removed the picture. We put a picture up there and he wrote, it's okay to be angry. And so instead of saying that he needed to be something different, mm -hmm. he just let it be. And then his whole what life. What it is. Man, that's really good. I think, and, and to piggyback on that, I think that the, when you develop yourself, you know, it comes through pack practice. It comes through pain, comes through perspiration. It comes through the trenches of life. And to your, to your point earlier about action and messy action, if, if you have, if you're listening to this and you have a problem that can be solved with action, then you don't really have a problem. Well, no, everything that you want lives on the other side of action. Totally. You're, you, what, you're stuck. That's what it is. You don't have a problem. You're stuck in one of the traps of self-doubt. Well, here's the difference between you and I, and this is where we're getting to. It's so crazy. I love being around like gangster people. We are building a business out right now. We haven't even talked about what business we're in yet. We spent all of our time worried about the values and the principle of who we're going to mm -hmm. be and what we're going to do for our employees. Because guess what? The business is obsolete. Yeah. I could start a dance studio tomorrow. It'd be the best damn dance studio you've ever seen in your life. You got it. And that's when you level up, right? And it's, it's like, yeah. and, and you're around, you know, high level people. We're talking to some money people right now who, who want to work with us to do development. And we're talking about like big money. Like 15, 40, 100 million shit, right? Love it. We spent like we spent like two weeks putting together a spreadsheet. We've had two meetings with him. You know when they asked for the spreadsheet? Never. Never. <laughs> you know what he said? This is all he said. We want to be in the Austin Linney business. Correct. So whatever the fuck that is, we're in. Yep. That's the game, baby, when you get to the higher level. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. It's to a point now where I have individual, and, and you're right. 
I, uh, 10 years ago, I first started a prison curriculum based all around financial literacy. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was, I thought I could solve this very simple problem that we refer to as FICO score. If a guy's sitting in the joint and he's got three years, five years, seven years to fix his credit, and he can walk out with a 620 or a 640 or a 680 score, and he can get an apartment instead of going to a halfway house, and he can get a lease on a, on a nice vehicle so that he's not paying 800 bucks a month on some 1964 Saturn from some buy here, pay here jerk off. That's a life changer. That's a game changer for these guys. And I could do that all based on what it kind of goes back to, which was credit score. So I created this financial literacy course and I gave it away, gave it away. And to your point of where you said earlier, everybody's so confused. They all came back to me. This was before Gary Vee was talking about, you know, left, left, jab, right, hook, give, 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 ask. Mm -hmm. This was back in the day. This is a decade ago when people were all focused and still are about what can I do for myself and how do I promote myself bigger and better? And I gave it away. And I thought, you know what, if I can change these individuals and I can change their trajectory, then that's one of the things that I'm supposed to do. That's one of my legacy plays right there. Fortunately, the curriculum went wild, crazy wild, unexpected how, how phenomenal of a response I was going to get. We got phone calls from departments of corrections, juvenile systems, the Bureau of Prisons, and I found myself on a speaking tour educating the United States government on how to rehabilitate an inmate. It's a true story. I would, I know I would give my right arm to see you at the first speaking engagement. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, depending on where, where you're going to be, there's a, there's a big one coming up in June. Where's that? In Boise. I'll send you some details. What but are you I just, about? Are you going? Uh, I'm speaking. Yeah. And okay, you well, I'm speak. coming. Hey, I, well, I can speak in done. Yeah, easy. You'll, you'll literally, I will, I will literally put note. you, that, go ahead. You do I will literally put you in rooms of individuals, both entrepreneurs, departments, state leaders, government leaders, as well as parents who can't figure out their children. Oh, that's my shit. Done. That's, that's my shit. Dude, done. I'm in. Oh my done. God. The number one on my list this year, speak on stage. Oh, that's easy. I make that happen. I will literally bring you inside the prison with me. I will put you in front of 400 people who can't get their mind right. True story. We'll record the whole thing. It'll be tears everywhere. You just wait. Oh, my God. Wait. It will be epic. Dude, I already got the presentation in my mind. I'm It'll loving it. It'll be epic. And to Dude, your point, gonna... when, when you dream about your Tuscany, over the last 10 years, when I get an email from somebody who says, my dad took your course. He's never getting out of prison, but he wanted me to contact you and ask you how to set up my IRA account. Oh. Bro, I cried. Oh my God. Legacy moments, legacy moments. I, had a, I was in a meeting yesterday with St. Vincent de Paul, the big Catholic charity. And he said to me, we've never met before this executive director and I. And he said, you're Travis? I said, I'm Travis that, since, since birth, plus or minus. And he said, I picked up someone yesterday from prison who took your entrepreneurship course and has built a food truck business in Texas. He's going to back to his family. He's got two trucks lined up and he said he was going to come back and bring that idea back to your entrepreneurship course to show you how successful he'd been. Took everything inside of me in that room, not to just tear up. Those are the legacy moments that you talked about when you're on that street corner in Tuscany and that somebody says, no, you impacted the life of so-and-so that impacted my life. That's why we gave this away. And if you believe that taking something away from me or, or you giving me your knowledge takes the pie smaller, we are not the same. We do not live on a scarcity mindset because if you're going to take a slice of my pie, we're going to create more fucking pies, bro. Dude, I had a call yesterday with all the partners of the new business and the two management girls who aren't owners in this. I sat on that call and I said, if these two women who are moms, I said, if they don't have a piece of this business, I'm not doing it. And let, let it be known that I'm the one that drives this fucking machine. And they're sitting there like, mm -hmm. and I know how important it is for them to have something that's theirs. 
And when I got laid off during COVID, I paid everybody that worked for me and I had no money coming in. Mm. When I got divorced, she took all the money. I still paid them. It's not on them for my life situation. Yeah. It's on me to figure it out. And I just said this to a client this morning. I said, in that moment, shit's going two different ways. You have a question you can ask yourself. Am I going to expand or am I going to attract distract? Mm -hmm. And, and here's the rub in investing. This is my biggest issue, and we'll get out of here because I know you got to go. Very good. Too many people are investing to get out of something instead of enhance their life. Mm. Say it louder for the people in the back. Too many people are trying to invest in crypto, fucking flipping NFTs to get out of something <laughs> instead of enhancing the life that they've already motherfucking created. Yeah. That's your fucking problem. Yeah. We created a culture of lottery instead of I'm going to be doing Bobby Bowden, the number one football coach in the fucking entire year. They said, why are you coaching? He said, what the fuck else do you want me to do? <laughs> there is no beach, motherfuckers. Yeah. I will be discharged up till I'm 99 fucking years old, infecting people and helping people because I'm going to spend the last 30 years of my life giving my shit away and I'm going to yeah. invest in middle school, high school businesses and teach financial literacy courses. Brilliant. Because, because when black lives mattered happened, I have a friend who's African-American. We had a real motherfucking scary ass conversation on the podcast. Like a real, like I, two minutes in, I was like, what did I do? This is not good. <laughs> okay. And then about like 30 minutes, it stabilized that after I calmed her down and we had like a real conversation and she enlightened me with something. It's changed my life forever, and you deal with it every day. She grew up in any in inner city of Philly. She said, Austin, it's not that they don't want to do better. It's that they don't know better. Yeah. And I said, so walk me through it. She goes, Austin, they don't know how to use a credit card. Yeah. They don't know how to get a loan. I said, are you, you fucking kidding me? It's a true story. And so I said, that's not okay. And so I made it my mission. We have knowledge is power. Knowledge is everything. Every time we build these companies out, we keep going back to one thing. And you predicated your entire business on it. Education. Mm. It is. It is Proper unbelievable. Education. It is unbelievable. When you start to, uh, I'll take people on a very long story. So we, we purchased a, um, we recently purchased this, uh, this small apartment building. And Going through, you know, everybody who, who doesn't know, there's there's different pockets of revenue that, you know, just outside of the rent, you know, and one of the pockets of revenue that you can create is in like the washers and the dryers. And I, I, I was sitting there one day and realized that this one particular dryer just, it took more coins. And I could see this becoming a problem because me as, as, as one of the owners, as the landlord, People don't like how that tastes. They would say, well, you know, are you, are you, are you screwing us over? You're trying to take more money from us on this dryer because I have to use twice as many coins. And being somebody who with my mom and my single mom and, and my other three sisters had slept in his car as a child growing up, I know what that feels like to spend $2.50 at a laundromat. And as simple as that might sound, I had to fix that. So Cost us a few hundred dollars to bring in a, you know, a, a professional to understand what was going on with the dryer. Come to find out all of the lint had been stuffed down into the filter. And as simple as a fix of that was, it gave me this real interesting perspective. I stood back that day and I said, you know, it's wild. That filter doesn't allow this machine to work properly. That filter that's in our mind that gives us awareness or that programs us to have scarcity doesn't allow the machine to work properly. Something as simple as cleaning out your filter, something as simple as realizing how programmed you are, something as simple as treating other people with greatness so that they live up to that potential changes the entire outcome of that machine.
Guys, I don't even know. I'm sending this like episode to like 20 people as soon as we get off this thing. All my coaching clients, I'm gonna bring you back. We're gonna have another one. I'd love very, to very soon. Uh, if to. people want to find out about your mission, what you got going on, where would they do that? Convictedmindset.com. And then I'm on Instagram at I am Travis Ritchie, R I C H E Y. So, guys, I've said this like a couple of times on the podcast. If, you, if, if you motherfuckers didn't get value from this, I don't know what to tell you. I want you to walk, fuck walking, run through the motherfucking brick wall that this one's going to send me to. I feel sorry for the guy I'm about to go on his podcast because I'm about to light that shit on fire when I get done because I'm so fired up right now. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to Construct Your Life with Austin Lenny. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and pay it forward by sharing with a friend. Most importantly, take this opportunity to start constructing your life by taking immediate action on what you learned. For show notes, resources, and more information on one-on-one coaching with Austin, visit constructyourlifepodcast.com.